Well, here we are back at Max's Garage Mahal. We're going to talk about these things today. And that is battery maintenance tools. And that's, uh, they're basically called a battery maintainer. And uh, they charge and maintain your batteries. And um, I've got two here. As you can see, I've got a couple of the Harbor Freight. And I bought them on the Black Friday or Cyber Monday type thing. They were $9.99 normally, and I've got them for $4.99 a piece. And I've already got one that I use on the old um, MTD Yardman all-wheel steer. It's a um, 1996 model. Been around a long time. Still does a good job. And um, the battery on that thing is probably, oh, I'd say, 10, 12 years old. And in the last year I've had to charge it nearly every time I get ready to start it which is only about three or four times a year so you can understand why the battery has a tendency to go down and it being winter time it's going to be even more critical to keep the battery at a maintenance level that will start the more otherwise once the lead aster, lead aster battery gets down below a certain charge then you can have uh, you can have cells that the plates get corroded and make contact inside and it shorts them out. So we don't want to lose a cell. So I keep one of these things on that thing and I'll, I'll take you back here in a moment with the camera and I'll show you that, uh, that there's already one on that one. And in the last seven or eight months, my Hustler Raptor OSD battery, which I bought the more in February of 14 and it had already been sitting on the dealer's showroom probably three or four months at that time and uh, it didn't go into service until late august i think august 31st or something like that because at that time i worked for homeland security and was attached to fema so i was out and going more than i was home so the mower really didn't get used so it sat there for quite a while and i've read a really check to see how old that battery is before it went on to the mower to go into service but it's been having to be charged if the mower sets 10 days, 2 weeks, which around here with Bermuda, um, it sets quite a long time before it gets mowed. So, because um, the grass doesn't grow that fast with dry spells. Now, we have had some rain this year, but there's been more dry spells than, than wet spells. So, the point, the, this whole thing is when these batteries get to the point, and we really should be doing this all along in the winter times, keeping a battery maintainer charger on these things. These things really come in handy for emergency vehicles like fire trucks, ambulances, uh, this sort of thing, police cars that are um, standbys that are not being utilized every day so that the batteries maintain a level of charge. Now, you do want to make sure that the battery has a minimum maintenance charge in it before you start which on a 12 volt battery you need to keep it above 11.6 11.5 somewhere in that area but it needs to really be 12.1 and higher so what we're going to do is we're going to test these batteries on these two units before we try these particular units here these maintainers i've got a vector that i picked up at home depot during uh, the uh Freaky Friday. Oh, no, that's not right. That's, it's Black Friday. It's one of those. So can we say Black Friday on here? So Black Friday. Now, with this um, Vector, it was a little more expensive. Oh, I think it was $29.99 before the Black Friday sale, and I think I gave $14.99. I don't have the receipt out here. I do have the receipt for the Harbor Freight that I picked up yesterday. And they were $4.99 a piece. Let's see if we can get that ring set. And I got my finger right in your way, don't I? They were $4.99 a piece. Okay. So, and that was with the, the discount code. Okay. So let's get into these things and see what we have here. On the vector, we have. We have a divider here. Let's see what all comes out of this thing. Alright, that's your battery cable connections. 
the maintainer body itself, which is basically a power supply. And this one is a 6 and 12 volt, 6 or 12 volt. And it has two LED lights on it. Has 120 volt input, 60 hertz, at 0.33 amps output. And that's on uh, all the way through. On 6.3 volt to 12.6 volt is 1.5 amps. Okay. All right. So let's see what else is in the box. Ah, instructions and register registrar. Okay, so we have the basically that's all you have in the box. Okay, let's get this in here out of the way. Okay, that's out of the way, town being. And let's see. You can it's got a quick connect here. You can hook it directly to your battery and leave this connected to your battery which it has a protective cover for when it's not been in use and that will hook up to directly to this vector charger maintainer here like that and then when you're ready, well it's going to have a good tight connection, that's a good thing so you just put this directly on your battery hook this to the wall but make sure the battery is charged before you do that then you're going to hook this to the wall, it has a little place here one two spots that you can drill and put a screw in the vehicle if you want to keep it on the vehicle all the time um, or you can put it on the wall with those and it's a good looking little unit don't weigh crap didn't weigh anything and these little units here the little clamp units sounds pretty good it's got some pretty good spring tension on it also has a cover for when it's not in use so you can just go ahead and plug this in if you prefer so that you only use it when it's in the shop plug it in like this right here and then just plug it in now always put this on your battery before you plug it into the wall always do that first hook up your ground and then your positive plug this into the wall and we will get into that here shortly and we'll find out what all these little pretty little LED lights stand for. There's a red one and a green one. Okay, let's see. We've got the Syntec, $4.99. All right, I'm going to give them their due. They're supposed to be $9.99, but just like that. We got that for less than $15. We got this in less than 5 So let's see if we can get into it. And... Uh, show you what's in the box or the, the bubble display it wasn't going to fall out of the box by itself for sure that'll be good enough and with this you get ah you do get instructions now I paid $4.99 for this as you were and I was offered a one year extended warranty at Harbor Freight for $5.99 or a two year extended warranty for $7.99. I wonder if y'all can guess which way I went. Did I go for the one year or the two year or the zero year for a $4.99 item? Okay. Don't think I really have to answer that. I think y'all can figure that out pretty quickly. And on this one, as you see, you get the unit. That's it. Let's see if it tells you the amperages and the hertz and all that stuff. No, it just tells you to prevent serious injury where ANSI approved safety goggles while connecting. Connect battery, then plug in. There you go. See, that? that's the same thing. Plug it into your battery, then into the wall. Okay, now, by the way, when you plug this in the battery, if the battery has, this is an LED light, so remember, LED lights will operate on 3 volts or less. I mean, I've seen these things shine with like less than 6 tenths of an amp. So that red light does not mean anything. It just means that it's got voltage lighting this. That's it. 
So, connect this to your battery, red to your positive, black to your negative, plug this in the wall. And that's all you got. Now, I will say this. On the little Syntec that I have in here on the MTD Yardman all-wheel steer, it, uh, it's been working for a year. It's working fine. I had that thing for 7 or 8, 10 years before I started using it. So, um, anyhow, <laughs> it does work. So I'm going to take the camera back here to the to the 1996 machine and show you that it does have one on it and um, I'm going to show you why you want to disconnect your positive cable in the winter time if you're not going to be starting your mower. I like to start my mowers and my machinery at least once a month and run them until they run and shut start them up and then after you run them for a few minutes and it's running in and idling or revving up just fine making sure your carburetor is clean Shut off your fuel supply, run it out of gas, and then do it again next month. You'll keep your machine in good shape. Okay, so let's go back here to the lawnmower shed built onto the back of the uh, Max's Garage Mall. Be right back. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, is a little Syntec, and it's plugged in. And I, and let me step back. The old mower is stuffed up underneath the workbench there because... It takes up a little less space, and I've got more room to move around. And there's a set of tires that I did the uh, lug cutting on in one of the earlier videos. And I've got a couple of projects going on up here. And there again, too, is that Syntec box that this one came out of. As far as I know, now it could be that I've got another one. Thing. Nope, that's the one. All right, so there it is plugged in the wall. And that looks a little heavier than the ones I have today. And... Let's see. This one actually has some information on it. This one is 120 volt AC, 60 hertz, 15 watt. And let's see. It puts out 500 milliamps, which is a half amp. Okay. So, a little different. Probably manufactured by a different company for Harbor Freight. But there you go. And um, I don't think I can lift the seat with it underneath that. Nope. Okay. Alright. So, let me go and we'll look at the... Uh, at the Hustler for a moment. Okay, there you go guys. As you can see, we have the uh, Solar brand 10 amp, 2 amp charger here. It's 6 to 12 volt. And it's pretty sad when it sits on the mower ready to go, isn't it? Huh? As you can see, it's unplugged at this time. It's been um, a little over a week since we've used it, or probably a week and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip the tripod here in a minute. And we're going to... Uh, check this battery and then hook up the maintainer on it if it has a good charge if not then we're going to charge it with this charger right here and then we will uh, hook up the maintainer and sometime in the next three or four days we'll come back and check it see if it still has the same charge in it if so then I'll tell you what we'll charge it to where it has minimum charge we'll see if the little maintainer will charge it up from there so give me a moment, we'll set up the tripod and we'll get on with the program. Okay, here we are at the Hustler RSD and we're going to uh, check the battery here real quickly. A couple of different manners. We're going to use a battery tester and that's basically all it's good for is checking a battery in your alternator system and make sure that it's putting out. So, and we know it's doing that. So let's do this. Let's flip. Yeah, let's break this while we're at it. Just so we get good, good video. Alright, so we're going to turn on a couple of different voltmeters here. And multimeters rather. And we're going to set it on 20 DC volts. Oh, it did break that sucker, didn't it? Look at there. I've never done that before. Okay. So. <laughs> And we've got two of them here. We have them both set on 20, as you can see. So let's, and we're going to, we're not going to go across the terminal connectors. We're going to go across the terminals themselves. So let's see if we can get you where you can see this. And I'm out of your way. Probably can't. Because that's quite a ways. So I'll zoom in down here real quickly. I'll try to. 
cameraman's not very good here. I'll have to give him that. Not very good at all. All right. Now then, okay. So we're gonna go red to red, which is hot is positive, and there we have 12.52 volts. Let's do the same thing with this one. Check one against the other, and we have 't see it so I'm not gonna lie to you okay so we know we have plenty of that direction get those out of the way let's grab this sucker out of the box it's always such a pain to tell to put back in but we're gonna grab this out of here and we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna go up here Cross like that and like this. And it says, without putting it under load, it says it has about 12.4, 12.3 looks like volts. All right, now we can put this under load and it shows us that it's. It. All right, so it shows it's like uh, these things are not. Boy, it really puts a load on this thing here. So it showed it at 9.9 .9 volts, which ain't real great. All right, it shows here your load volts should never drop below 10.2. So that battery's not that hot. Of course, you got to understand too, it's not a very large battery. And these are actually for, meant for testing car batteries. So we're sort of uh, putting a little more load on it than that starter motor is going to. So it most likely we'll need a little bit of charge before we put the maintainer on it. But what we're going to do, let's pull that out, let's get this out of the way. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this little cheapy rascal here first. And Put it on here. I'll tell you what, let's do so I don't have to unwind all this crap for the time being. I'm going to plug it into extension cord here and we'll do this right here. Plug that sucker in right here, just like that. Then we're going to go right over here and I'm going to plug it in. Now, this is just for testing, this is not for. This is not permanent. We're going to leave the battery hooked up on the Hustler because, um, and I did that backwards, didn't I, guys? Y'all just see me do what exactly what I told you not to do. All right, so we're going to hook that up. Then we're going to hook up the charger. Okay, now, just for the hell of it, let's see what the... Uh, what the little machine is putting out here, if anything. Well, if y'all can see that or not, it'd be pretty hard on it. Okay, let's do it right there again. Turn it on. Let's see if it shows any more with this little Syntec on than it did. 12.53, 12.53 with the Syntec. All right, now these things, if you test them straight across without the, uh, without a battery connected into the system, you're not gonna show anything because um, these things have to have a battery in order for them to put out any kind of uh, amperage. So they were not really gonna show anything until you do that. So let's do this. Let's unplug this one, remove these clamps, let's go ahead and clamp this one in place, looks 
Let's don't clamp that in place because that happens to be the battery charger. Get it out of the equation here. All right, let's go ahead and plug this puppy in right here, which this is the brand is Vector, and it came from again from Home Depot. Now we're going to pull that protective cover off, drop it in that drink cover, drink glass down there. All right, now let's see what it shows here. It shows that we have a green blinking light. And I believe that means it is charging. Okay, now let's see. Of course, it hadn't run long enough yet to put anything in it, but we're going to check it anyway. We'll come back and check it again later. But for now, we want to check it right here. 12.9495, so 9.6. Nine seven, nine eight, nine nine, thirteen, thirteen point oh two, oh three. Point, there you go, guys. So if you want to know which one is putting out the most charge, it's going to be the little vector here. Okay. So we're going to leave that on there for a little bit. We're going to come back and test it and say half hour. Okay. So stay tuned. We'll come back and try to give you some more information. Okay, here we are back. It's 2 p.m. It was 11.30, I think, a.m. when we left here earlier. And as you can see, we now have a solid green light. So the first test I want to do is to go over here and get a digital readout from the um, voltmeter on more. And it says 12.7. Okay. So let's throw this meter back on here. And let me see if I can get you in here a little bit tighter. Okay. You can see the solid green lights here. And let's turn this puppy on. Hopefully you can see that. And we've got 12.9 on the multimeter. 12.9 on the multimeter. And on the battery tester we have 12.9. Take that off. Didn't really want to do this, but we're going to do that just so we can test it in front of you here. So we'll unplug this. Okay. Unplug that from the battery and unclamp it. Now we're going to clamp this puppy on and this one. And it shows to have 12.5 on this analog meter. So it's a little higher than it was on the analog. A lot higher on the multimeter. So I want to say this is going to work out just fine. And although I didn't purchase it for this particular machine, I actually purchased this to put on my uh, my Yukon, and that's probably where to go. I'm going to put my, I'm going to leave this on temporarily, and let's see, are you going to work? Well, I'll be dead gone. Unplugged it and plugged it back in, and as you can see, it has ceased to function. How about that? Okay. Plugged in there. 
Oh, you don't want it to cease to function? Because I plugged in the dog on sucker down there. <laughs> okay, you saw me do it right here on camera. All right. thing was being intermittent but what it's doing is going back to charging okay all right that looks pretty good so one more time let's take the multimeter and see what it says it's putting out now that it's charging again I don't know if I can get that multimeter where you can see it or not my camera guy here really is not worth a flip but y'all have known it for quite a while now and it says 1402 well that's charging so the battery is taking a charge and the and this back to full charge now and the maintainer the vector maintainer is keeping it at uh, full capacity so again we're going to give this a few days we're going to go ahead also and go back and check the MTD more back there get it where you can see it and we'll put the uh, multimeter on that thing and see and the battery tester and just see what it shows and we know that battery's bad but um, it, if it's it maintains it by the way at high enough uh, charge that we can go ahead and use the lawnmower when necessary so that's not a bad thing and having a maintainer around has saved me from having to buy a battery for a what is it, 23 year old lawnmower so uh, Consequently, I think it's a good idea to keep one of these things and this being the winter time I think it's a great idea that you keep battery maintainer on it And now that I know for pretty sure that I won't be using the lawnmower probably until February to spread some lime I may spread some lime this month actually if the temperature gets up around 65 70 degrees and, and put out oh, 400 pounds 600 pounds something like that of lime out here on this uh, acre yard and then, uh, and then I can uh, put the mower away again until February, and we'll put out, uh, depending on the temperature, maybe January we'll put out some um, pre-emergent and um, go from there. So we don't really need the mower that much. And this one, being the star of the show, it'll be started quite often, moved around as we do different things. We've got some stuff here and we still got quite a few projects that for some reason all the parts don't seem to get here at the same time which that's the problem with ordering in parts you know um, do the best you can with what you got and uh, let's go back here and take a look at the other machine and see what it says okay here we are back at the 1996 MTD yard main all wheel steer I don't know if you can see those tires but they're not exactly straight with them or so alright there we go and that shows to have 14.01 and that is on the Syntec if you can see that this is the Syntec battery maintainer so let's get this multimeter out of the way and let's put the And it shows to have 14.1. So, I don't know. Syntec may be, <laughs> may have a, this old battery, uh, let's see. That thing was put on it, looks like in, two thousand and two. How old is that? Seventeen years? That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to conclude. Get this up where we can see it. Whoa, how's that, everybody? I'm going to conclude that the Syntec is doing a good job. And as I told you earlier, I've been using this Syntec since at least a year. And I'm fairly sure that I put this on there last winter. 
as I know in the spring I just fired it right up and and I had no problems with it at all and I am guilty of not removing the positive post which I'm going to do now because I've got a um, power socket on here and it's not only a switch I am going to go ahead and put a switch on that power socket so that as I run sprayers and stuff I can go ahead and and start and stop the sprayer with the switch but what has happened is it has corroded off the little really thin factory supplied connector I'll put a heavy duty connector on there and um, then I'll leave that loose for the for the rest of the winter except when I'm using it and I'll just keep the battery maintainer on it so I'm going to say guys get you a battery maintainer it can be a $4.99 Syntec they seem to work just fine I have three of them now. I have the other one in there that's got all the bells and whistles on it. And now it does not have a cigarette lighter um, plug. That's one thing it does not have. And some of the more expensive ones do. I don't really see the need for that, although I assume that people do try to charge their batteries through their cigarette lighter. I wouldn't want to do that. But um, again, I really think you ought to get one of these things and try it out and um, if you are a hustler or big dog owner then be sure and come over and join our hustler more owners group in Facebook we also have a hustler more owners forum which we still it's up and running we just haven't really opened the doors to everyone so that'll be coming to you pretty soon and um, you can probably put things on the forum that we don't normally do in the group but we'd like to have you, you know, come on over and join us. And if you have any contributions, we'd love for you to contribute. Um, we are going to continue bringing you more videos. And hopefully, we're bringing you content that you both enjoy, can use, and you can share with others. And if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. I'd also appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up and a like. And then uh, be able to share these things with everyone that you like. We'd love to have more people see these videos. And we've got more test and reviews coming up. Uh, we've got more modifications for the lawnmower. Some, they're not necessary, ne they're not necessarily necessary. Uh, they're just making things easier for me in the future for changing oil. Uh, I like to see the oil temperature, so there's probably be an oil gauge going on here. I've got some surprise I've been talking to Mr. Doug Kramer from Kramer Neon, our, our Cream Neon videos, and our old friend Michael Jesse over at Michael Jesse YouTube videos. And uh, we're always coming up with new things to do with these mowers that makes it easier for us. Not just that it personalizes us, but it also makes things easier for us during the operation and the maintenance. So that's the sort of things we want to keep bringing you. So be sure. And y'all come back and see us at Max's Garage Mahal. You hear?